Good morning, third, fourth, and fifth graders. Uh, as you're watching this tomorrow, I'm filming it today, you'll be watching it tomorrow. I hope you're all looking forward to what I know will be an exciting parade where our Loudoun Valley High School marching band will lead us. I hope that all of you enjoyed trick-or-treating last night and Halloween was a fun experience for you all. I have a story I want to read to you. Actually, we have two stories. And our first one is entitled Poultry Geist. And it's by Mary Jane and Herm Ock. And you notice these are poultry. One thing that I really like about this book is it has bright and vivid pictures. Rudy and his best friend, Ralph, were two rowdy young roosters. They weren't loud on purpose, but there was so much to crow about. Each tried to be the first and loudest to crow at sunrise every morning. Then they had contests all day long to decide who was the strongest or the biggest or the loudest. Finally at sundown, they wrestled each other for the highest roost on the barn. Most of the other farm animals didn't mind the racket. They were rather noisy themselves and barely noticed Rudy and Ralph. The only ones who complained were Sophie the pig and Glarissa the cow. I need peace and quiet to make milk, Glarissa mood, moo. But Glarissa, Rudy said, you give milk every day, no matter how loud we are. You're keeping me awake every night, Sophie grunted. I need my beauty sleep. Can't argue with that one, Ralph whispered to Rudy. It was two days before Halloween. Time to make costumes for the big Halloween poultry parade. This caused even more than the usual amount of commotion. I'm losing my patience with this uproar, Clarissa bellowed. Me too, snorted Sophie. And then the two of them went off in a huff. What old grumps, Ralph said. They can't remember what it's like to have fun. I bet they were never young at all. I hope none of our students ever say that about our staff members because we all love to have fun here at Hamilton. Rudy felt sorry about bothering Clarissa and Sophie. He tried to be quiet the whole next day. But when the animals gathered in the barn that night to finish their Halloween costumes, he got caught up in the excitement and added his voice to the squawking. See, they're doing some good job with making their costumes. Wah, goats. Suddenly, a huge figure rose up in the far corner of the barn, its head almost touching the highest roost. Rudy had never seen such a creature so tall. The monster let out a moan as it lurched forward. The animals tumbled out of the barn and in a flurry of feathers. They ran until they reached the top of the hill. Clarissa and Sophie were the slowest runners and the last to arrive. Both were very out of breath. What was that thing? Rudy asked. It was the ghost, the poultry geist. Clarissa gasped. The legend says the poultry geist has been sleeping for a hundred years, whispered Sophie. I'm afraid you woke it up with all your noise. Nobody dared go back in the barn that night. Staff members who were in there, you will probably remember there was a really scary movie called, uh, not Poltergeist, but it was called, hmm, what was the name of it? It was called, what was the name of it, Mrs. Glover? Um, poltergeist. Anyway, ask your teachers the name of that movie. They'll probably remember. I remember it was very scary. When the sun rose the next morning, Rudy and Ralph held each other's beaks closed to keep from crowing. It wasn't easy. Didn't you see that, Rudy asked, when Ralph finally let go of his beak? The sun came up without us crowing into the sky. Don't tell anybody, Ralph said. We'll be out of a job. Everybody stayed out of the barn all day. They even held the Halloween poultry parade outside which was fun because the costumes looked scarier in the dark. But as the night went on, it got colder and colder. One by one, the shivering animals slipped, slipped back inside to the haunted barn. Ralph and Rudy were the last two left outside. My drumsticks have turned into popsicles, Rudy said. His beak chattering, let's go in. Inside the barn, the only sound was snoring. There was no sign of the poultry geist. Let's pick our roosts, only two left. Ralph scanned the rafters looking for the poultry geist. You take the high roost, 
I'll use the low one next to the exit. I mean the door. He was being a scaredy cat. No, you should have the highest roost, Ralph. After all, you're taller than me. Oh, I am not, Ralph said. Look, you're slouching, Rudy shouted. Ralph dropped his feathers. You should have the top roost because you're much handsomer than I. No, I'm ugly, Rudy crowed. Look, get up up on that top roost, Ralph hollered. No, you get up there, Rudy screeched. The two roosters rolled around on the floor, feathers flying, when suddenly a shadow fell over them. A very tall shadow. Boo! Howled the poltergeist. There was a great flapping and squawking as the animals fled to safety. But Ralph and Rudy were trapped in a corner. Yikes, this is it, buddy, Ralph cried. We're going to go to that big roost in the sky now. Look, they're so scared. Don't give up. We can escape. Rudy grabbed his friend and tried to run around the poltergeist, but instead the two roosters smacked right into it. And it didn't feel all clammy and ghost-like. Hmm. Instead, it felt like, boys and girls, use your imagination. What do you think it might feel like? Feed sacks, Rudy cried. The poltergeist is nothing but a bunch of feed sacks all sewn together. Can't be. But Ralph gave a tug on the sacks. And there stood Sophie and Glarissa. Boo, Glarissa booed, her eyes closed. Enough with the ghost talk, Sophie said. We've been unmasked. So I think their friends played a little trick on them. Awesome Halloween costume, Ralph said. You sure had us fooled. They weren't fooling, Rudy said. They wanted to scare us into being quiet. Bingo, Sophie said. What gave you that first clue? Um, I don't get it, Ralph said. I was trying hard to be quiet. Not hard enough, said Clarissa. Later, when the two roosters were alone, Ralph said, I wasn't really afraid of that old poultry guy, you know. Are you kidding me, Rudy Squawk? You were so scared you almost choked on your gizzard. I did not, did too, did not, did too. Um, said Sophie, there's more than one way to quiet a pair of rowdy roosters. So she sat on both of them. And the two rowdy roosters remembered that lesson for a long time. I think the name of the scary movie, which this is sort of being a, uh, a parody of, is called Poltergeist. And this is called Poultrygeist. I don't think I ever really watched the movie Poltergeist because I'm a scaredy cat when it comes to scary movies.